All right, hello everyone. Is it picking me up, right? Yeah, good. Um, hi, my name is Dan Wellant. I'm from VMware. Appreciate you all taking the time to come to this session. I'm going to be talking, this is going to be mostly an overview session about OpenStack and VMware. Um, for people who kind of probably don't have a whole lot of background on that topic, we've got a bunch of deep dive sessions later here at the summit that I'll, um, I'll end with a slide that talks about all of those. So it's kind of a where can you go next to, to learn more thing. So a little bit about me. Um, a background in networking and security. Uh, I joined a company, a startup called Nicira. Um, I was there for a while, and as part of that, was involved in the very early days of OpenStack. Um, helped create the OpenStack networking project, which was then called Quantum, now called Neutron. And so I was the project team leader, PTL, for that uh, for a couple years. And now I'm at VMware. Uh, VMware acquired Nicira a couple years ago. And I head up our overall product and strategy around OpenStack. So, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, every, I've, I've been to every OpenStack Summit now, like since the first one, the private one in, in Austin, and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of helped me realize every, every six months it's kind of like this drumbeat of kind of, well, where is OpenStack now? How is it different from where we were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago? And so, you know, as part of that I, I kind of started thinking and it kind of made me realize that OpenStack's gone through a couple different ages. And so, you know, everyone would probably have a slightly different definition of that, but this is kind of how I think of it. Like in the early days, it was fun. We stayed up all night. We hacked. We drank a bunch of beer. We hacked some more. It was all this kind of like just grow the community, more people. Let's get involved. Hey, let's do this thing. It's fun. Um, you know, and this is kind of this age of formation. And there wasn't a lot of companies or vendors necessarily at that point vying for anything. It was just, hey, let's, let's make this happen. Let's take on, you know, take on the world. You know? And then, and then things like, you know, I remember when I stepped into San Francisco summit, I was like, where did all these people come from? And like each summit, it was just more people and more people and more people. And it, it kind of, you know, OpenStack and the expectations for OpenStack um, just kind of went through the roof. And in a lot of ways, you know, I've, I've talked with a lot of the, the, the early leaders of OpenStack, you know, about this. And, you know, it was in a lot of ways, is this notion of kind of like OpenStack was something for nothing. It was, it was a cloud for free. It was amazing. You're missing, you know, it was, it was this opportunity and, and everyone was kind of piling in to figure out what was going on. In fact, um, you know, someone used a great analogy, this isn't mine, I don't know if he wants me to give him credit, so I'll just, I'll use it generically. But, you know, he said, he said people kind of had this impression that, that OpenStack was like MySQL, right? It was just something you downloaded, you installed, and it worked, and then you moved on to the next thing, right? And, and so, you know, I, I think that really kind of inflated these expectations around OpenStack um, that in some ways were actually very hard for, for OpenStack to measure up to and, and to deliver on. And so, you know, my theory now, and obviously anytime you're, you're, it's easy to look back three years ago and say where you are, it's, it's always harder to make statements about where we are today. But, you know, I kind of see us now moving into this, this age of, of, of more pragmatism around OpenStack. Um, people kind of understand what it is better, they, they understand what it's going to do, and their main question is kind of, you know, how does OpenStack drive value for my business? It's not so much, wow, there's this cool thing for, you know, that I like to hack on. It's not that, oh, it's this amazing thing for free. It's, hey, there's value here. How does that value apply to my business? So, you know, if you look into what's, what's caused this shift, it's, it's an interesting, um, interesting question to ask. You know, I think in part it's just more awareness of people who have actually used OpenStack. People have now downloaded it. They've stood it up. They're not just reading articles about it. They actually have firsthand experience about it. Um, you know, there's also, there's great, you know, operator meetups now where you can hear stories from everyone else. People have a much more realistic view of what it means to use OpenStack. And, you know, that it's not something that you just download like MySQL and, 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 and are off to the races. But it's also, um, you know, my theory at least is that it's also, I think, a, a changing, changing set of people looking at OpenStack. And people who are, who are not, you know, these web scale companies who are going to throw a bunch of developers at it. But they're actually enterprises saying, okay, you know, I have my existing technologies, I have my existing teams, how, how is this going to work for me? How does OpenStack um, help my business? And so there, there's a handful of, of general directions that I've, that I've, or general shifts that I've seen. You know, the first and probably most obvious one is a shift from kind of this free do-it-yourself model more to, you know, using some vendor to de-risk, right? Um, you know, even some of the very earliest people who are all gung-ho about, I need to tweak this part of OpenStack and this part of OpenStack, once they've gone through a couple upgrades, this and that, they're kind of saying, oh, maybe I don't need to tweak this. Maybe I'm just going to, going to uh, have someone else help with me, help me with that. 
You know, another one is, is kind of early days, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to hire a bunch of OpenStack-enabled developers, and they're going to come on board, and I'm going to have my, my cloud project up in three months. Right? Suddenly realize, well, everyone else is trying to hire those. You know, there's 20 of those people in the world, and everyone was trying to hire 20 of them. Um, you know, so it's much more of a shift now to, well, how do I take my, um, how do I enable my current team to deliver OpenStack, as opposed to assuming I'm going to hire this, this, this new team that's just out there. And, and finally, and this is you know, something that probably is pretty consistent that you're hearing across talks and at the keynote, you know, it's all about um, from a focus on kind of, you know, oh, this is free or this is cool technology to how do I enable developer innovation? And so let's, let's go into, you know, that's the most important point here, I think. And ultimately, that's, that's kind of my takeaway of this whole kind of thought experiment was that really I think this age of, age of pragmatism is really about people separating out the why of OpenStack from the how of OpenStack, which was something that's actually very surprisingly, it seems obvious now, but it's surprisingly very muddled early on. You know, the why is pretty obvious. You've got businesses that want, that see software as a key differentiator, right? And they see automation via APIs as a way that help their software development teams, you know, deliver software faster and more reliably because they can repeatedly deploy through dev, test, and production. And OpenStack's the how side of that. OpenStack's a framework, right, that enables those APIs for automation. And importantly, you know, it enables those APIs on top of your choice of underlying infrastructure. So that's kind of the context. The rest of the, the talk will actually be talking specifically about VMware. But I actually think this shift in focus is actually important because these are the types of discussions that we like to have with our customers around OpenStack. It's not just, you know, great, it supports OpenStack APIs. Well, any way you run OpenStack is going to support those same standard open vendor neutral APIs. The real question is, what technology do I pick as an engine uh, you know, that gives me the operations capabilities I need, the security I need, the ability to troubleshoot, the ability to scale, et cetera. And obviously, I'm from VMware, and I think we've got some really cool technology on that front. And so that's what we'll be talking about for most of the rest of the talk. So you know, the high-level way that, that, that we think about the value of OpenStack and VMware for our customers is, again, developers should only ever have to deal with those open, vendor-neutral, op, you know, standard APIs that let them innovate, right? But the person running the cloud, the person, you know, in the old days, I'd say carrying a beeper. I don't know what, what you know, maybe it's a cell phone now or a, or a smartphone now. But, you know, it's what tools do they have, right, to reliably, securely deliver a cloud infrastructure, you know, based on their existing skill set and existing capabilities. And that's really where the value of bringing the OpenStack APIs and the rock-solid VMware infrastructure comes together. And really, I think of this as an opportunity in several ways. First off, you know, it's an opportunity for the OpenStack community, right, to be able to embrace this model of, of, of you know, not just saying, hey, enterprises, you have to learn a new way of running your infrastructure. It's a way for them to say those cloud developers can use all the tools. They can use the OpenStack APIs, the CLIs. They can use Heat. They can use Horizon, et cetera, right? But they can do that in a way that works with their existing ops team. Those existing ops teams continue to use their same tools, the scripts they've built, the third-party tools they've brought along, all of their existing knowledge and expertise. So, you know, it was, it was really great. We actually worked with the OpenStack Foundation. They, the foundation came to us and said, we want to write a white paper about how OpenStack can be accelerated into the enterprise using OpenStack on top of VMware. And so we actually, um, you know, they, they had one of their staff writers work, and they actually put out this white paper. They talked to several customers who are using OpenStack and VMware. And so this was a great example of why I think actually running OpenStack and VMware is a fantastic opportunity for the OpenStack community as a whole, right? It makes it easier to make this technology, you know, be accepted and be embraced and have enterprises take it and run with it. But of course, I actually think OpenStack is a great opportunity for VMware as well, right? Ultimately, as VMware, the way we look at OpenStack is that it's a set of APIs and tools and layers, right, that can make our core product much more attractive to this new generation of developers who wants everything to be API-driven. And so what you can see up here is a picture of, uh, that's, our, that's our CEO, Pat Gelsinger. 
um, up at a stage, um, VMworld, room slightly larger than this, I'd say about 30,000 people in there, right? <laughs> telling, you know, maybe a little, I'm, I'm just estimating here, but, you know, telling, you know, all the 30,000 people there and all the people watching the live stream how VMware is making it easy uh, for their for VMware customers to consume OpenStack. So this is a product that, that we announced last at VMworld. It's called VMware Integrated OpenStack. We'll talk a bit more about it later. Launched as a beta at VMworld, just went GA about two months ago. Um, and you know, our goal here is, right, is if, if you've already invested in vSphere, right, um, VIO is free to use. And if you want to pay us for support, you can pay us just 200 bucks a, a CPU per year. So our goal here is to make it, both from a financial perspective and from an ease of use perspective, very easy for anyone who knows how to run production grade VMware infrastructure to use that to deliver OpenStack to their development teams. So it's always very exciting when you, when you see your boss um, way up on the stage talking about your product. So that's why I always like that picture. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense at a high level. I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back a little bit and provide a little context Next, um, so you know, I mentioned I came I came to um, VMware through a, through an acquisition of Nicira. Nicira is actually a company that um, started out. We actually created OpenFlow. We created the first OpenFlow specs. Uh, we created a project called OpenVSwitch, which um, you know is an open source virtual switch that's still actually at the heart of um, you know most OpenStack networking, whether you're using VMware or not. Um, and so you know, pretty soon after we started OpenVSwitch, NASA and Rackspace created. Uh, created uh, OpenStack, and because of our involvement in, with OpenVSwitch and because Rackspace was using the NICERA technology, they invited us to be part of OpenStack from the very beginning. And from there, you know, NICERA was primarily involved in the networking project, uh, which is now called Neutron. Once the acquisition happened and, and NICERA joined VMware, basically VMware had a choice. They either, you know, a lot of people said, oh, VMware acquired NICERA, now they're gonna shut down all that OpenStack stuff that the NICERA team did. But actually, you know, we had a lot of discussions about it, and VMware was actually very open, and they said, actually, we're going to double down on OpenStack. We're not just going to keep the NICERA stuff integrated with OpenStack. We're going to integrate the whole rest of our product portfolio with OpenStack. And so what you can see is over time, right, we've integrated with Nova and Cinder and Glance and Solometer, um, and now we've even launched a full GA product um, to deliver OpenStack to our customers. So again, this is about VMware's commitment to open APIs, open interfaces uh, for our customer, and contributions to the open source community. I want to provide a quick update on a couple things around Kilo. So obviously, you know, in terms of upstream involvement in OpenStack, we're, we're kind of regularly one of the top 10 contributors to OpenStack, you know, in the Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Glance, all those core projects. And the fact that we upstream this, um, this code means that you can download the open source um, OpenStack code and run it with VMware products. Right, you can actually go to a third-party vendor like Canonical or Red Hat or Mirantis or HP and use their distros and use it with vSphere or NSX technology. And so there's a lot of options in terms of how you can run uh, OpenStack on VMware. It's not just VMware integrated OpenStack. Another thing to call out, I mentioned earlier, we've been driving the Open vSwitch project for quite a while. We also just recently, earlier this year, announced something called OVN. Um, it's, it's basically, it's kind of a add-on to the Open vSwitch project to solve a lot of the virtual networking challenges. Open vSwitch itself exists only on a particular hypervisor. OVN is about creating those together, kind of creating virtual networks that overlay on top of, um, on top of individual hypervisors to provide virtual networks. So think of this as a base capability. It's compatible with KVM, compatible with Zen as well. And uh, you know, VMware and Red Hat are, are pretty much the main people. This is all open source. Um, keep an eye out. I think I heard something that, that, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a release coming up soon, but I don't know the exact date. So um, if you want to see the announcement, there's a, there's a blog post there. Just, just Google um, OVN. But that's really cool stuff. Another thing we've been driving with an OpenStack is something called the Congress Policy Project. So this is really about saying, well, there, there's all kinds of rules and policies and enforcement that, that an enterprise or, or other business is going to typically want to be able to do on top of OpenStack. And those things don't exist only within a project, right? They actually span projects, right? It may be that if you're booting off of this image, that means you can't connect to the network because this isn't a validated image. Um, and so, so we helped um, create a community around this Congress project and actually just this um, Last cycle, it was actually promoted to a full OpenStack um, 
part of, part of the official OpenStack project. So that was a big win. You can see some of the other companies that are working with us on, on Congress as well. So, you know, what's the result of all of this upstream work we've been doing and, and, and integration? Like I said, it's, it's really about making sure that there's a great way to leverage every bit of the VMware technology stack if OpenStack is the way you want to think about your infrastructure. And so, you know, in the world of OpenStack, really there's, there's two main sets of people we think about. We think about the application development teams, right, the DevOps team. They're building their applications. They're either writing scripts against the OpenStack APIs or using some third-party tools like Vagrant or Chef or whatever, right, to orchestrate the automation, the deployment, the upgrade, the scale out and scale down of their application. And all that application management and automation happens on top of the standard OpenStack APIs and tooling. And that happens you know, with VMware integrated OpenStack or with any other version of OpenStack that you're using. And the question really comes down to this cloud infrastructure and operations team. And what technology is the right set of technologies for them to be able to deliver a world-class cloud to their application development teams? Because we already said earlier, right, those application developers, those are that, that software they're writing is what's differentiating the business. Right. We need to provide them with great cloud infrastructure so that they can move quickly and, and build great applications. And so all the way from the virtualization technology to the hardware technology to the tools that you use to um, operate, manage, and troubleshoot, and monitor that infrastructure, those are all decisions made by the cloud infrastructure team. And this is, of course, where a lot of the VMware technology plugs in. So for example, we've done integration with Nova um, so that it can talk to vCenter and ESX. Probably the number one question we get here is, hey, do I still get to use things like vMotion and DRS um, when I'm using OpenStack with VMware? And the answer is yes. We've done this integration in a way that OpenStack actually deploys to a cluster. And so DRS can still move those workloads around, or you can put a host in maintenance mode, um, and it will evacuate. So we've been very careful about how we've done that integration um, in a way to preserve a lot of the, the capabilities that people love about vCenter. Um, NSX is a networking technology that actually is independent of vCenter or vSphere. Right? You could deploy it with another hypervisor like KVM. You could deploy it with vCenter. You can deploy it with a mix of the two. But NSX lets you create virtual networks um, with no requirement about controlling the physical networking hardware underneath. So you can create firewall rules and load balancing policies and isolated networks all virtually via API calls. From a storage perspective, it's actually very interesting what we've done here. So from both a Cinder storage and a Glant storage perspective, we've, in, we've integrated with the vSphere APIs for storage. And what that means is that any storage that works with vSphere automatically works with OpenStack and vSphere. That means whatever third-party storage you're already using in your vSphere environment, all of that, no need for a, a particular Cinder driver or anything like that. It all just works. Or any combination of, of vendor storage that you have. It all just works out of the box because Cinder volumes end up as VMDKs on top of vSphere data stores. And that goes the same thing with uh, VMware Virtual SAN, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It's a technology that takes the disks and flash in your hypervisor hard drives themselves and creates virtual um, storage area networks out of them. And so whatever storage or combinations of storage uh, you leverage with, with um, vCenter, you can automatically run that with OpenStack and vCenter. And this is actually very important because a lot of the value our customers see is that they can take the production-grade infrastructure that they have today, and they can immediately deliver OpenStack on top of it in a way that they know they can run at production-grade. They don't have to reevaluate or, or revalidate um, re a, a bunch of hardware or, or new, new systems. In terms of you know, operations and troubleshooting, this is something we'll get into later. We have, we have a lot of tools on that side that help you run a cloud better. VRealize is a suite of products. There's VRealize Operations, VRealize Log Insight for log analysis, and VRealize Business for chargeback. All of these have been integrated in a way that, that they work and play very nicely with OpenStack on top of VMware. And obviously, you can run whatever you want at this higher layer, right? Because we're just exposing standard OpenStack APIs. But you know, one, of the, one of the products we also offer uh, through our sister company, Pivotal, up at this layer is Pivotal Cloud Foundry which exposes a higher level platform as a service um, for your developers who want to build applications using that model. And then of course, you can get OpenStack yourself, you can get OpenStack from a third party, or you can choose to get OpenStack from VMware all in this tightly integrated package, and that's called VMware Integrated OpenStack. 
So hopefully this gives you an idea. Like I said, there'll be many follow-up sessions that will dive into specifically NSX and all these other areas. This, this is intended primarily to be an overview. So one thing that I always, you know, people kind of want to, a lot of times when people talk about running OpenStack and VMware, they're very focused on what does my application need, um, which is definitely one of the things you need to think about. Does it need HA? Does it need different storage um, capabilities, et cetera? But you know, it's also very important to say, you know, think about the gap between what you need to run a tiny POC on and the gap of what you need to run a production grade system on. So I've got a couple, couple concrete examples. Um, I don't know if anyone, this is one of my favorite, favorite blogs about OpenStack. I've used this for, for a couple of years, but it's, it's still as true today as when they wrote it, I think. Is that, you know, this is, this is from uh, a guy who basically ran eBay's um, OpenStack cloud. And he said, you know, OpenStack is a, is a starting point for building a cloud. It's not a cloud solution. And there's a whole bunch of these other problems you're going to have to solve when you think about an OpenStack cloud. And that's ultimately where, where you have to think about actually, you know, consuming a solution or building your own solution. And that's a choice that, that OpenStack provides. So a couple, couple concrete examples. So I mentioned already vRealize operations. Um, we use vRealize operations as a tool many of our customers already use to manage their vSphere environments. And um, with vRealize operations, we've added OpenStack intelligence to it. And that means two things. So first off, um, the OpenStack control plane itself. Right? OpenStack, when deployed for scale with high availability is actually a pretty complicated application in and of itself. So we actually monitor that application. We can tell you if it's healthy. We can tell you um, if maybe your, one of your Nova API nodes is down or your Neutron API server is overloaded or it's lost connectivity to your vCenter, et cetera. Right? All those troubleshooting tools, we can, we've kind of automatically embedded them into that, into that interface. Secondly, if a, if a customer calls up and says, oh, I'm tenant you know, foo on you're on the OpenStack cloud, I'm having a problem with one of my VMs. You can actually pull up based on the OpenStack tenant name. You can see all of their VMs using their OpenStack identifiers. And then you can see how they map from, uh, from, VM, from OpenStack VM to underlying vSphere VM to the physical server it's on to the physical hardware it's on and the health of all those items along that path. So we'll be giving a full demo of this um, tomorrow. Very, very powerful stuff to see. Similarly, log insight, it's about not just about log collection, which to be honest with you isn't that hard of a problem. Um, it's really about the log analysis and being able to provide a bunch of very meaningful dashboards and alerts, et cetera. So we've already baked a bunch of OpenStack intelligence into that. We run OpenStack internally for our own developer consumption. And so we've taken a lot of that learning and mindset and built them into these two operational tools. Um, there's also, I just actually found this while Googling around the other day. This is another, this is one of the, a, a VIO customers kind of writing up their own experience using vRealize uh, Log Insight to solve. They talk about how they install, they talk about how they actually had a real issue in their environment and, and did some troubleshooting there. So I thought that was, I always like real world uh, customer examples. So that was interesting. Um, this is another thing. So actually both of these are, are examples of using NSX. This was a customer who, um, you know, wrote a, wrote a post about how they were, they were doing some cool um, networking with NSX across data centers. But the real point is, you know, lots of different OpenStack solutions can let you do a demo that you create a network here, create a network there. Um, what I really like about that picture on the right is, uh, you know, um, is that that's actually, so you guys have all seen the, the topology view in Horizon, right? This is what it looks like when you've got, you know, a network or two networks. This is actually what it looks like when you've got, like, I, I, had, to, I had to trim it, but I think there are about 1,000 networks in that setup. Right? This is what happens when you're actually using OpenStack for something like CI. Right? You, know, you don't have one network, you don't have two networks, you actually get hundreds and thousands of these things. And so that's really you know, the advantage of, of NSX. It's in the, you, know, you have to think about how is this system going to operate at scale? What resilience properties does it happen if one of my gateway nodes fails? Right? Or what happens when I upgrade? Do all my, do all my uh, VM users lose, lose networking connectivity? If so, they're not going to be very happy. So NSX has solved a lot of those, those, those key problems, everything from upgrade to operations to troubleshooting. And it's actually now, I think, this was actually a couple months ago. They announced there's, there's over 400 customers running NS, or, um, uh, leveraging NSX right now. So that's, um, it's a very powerful, very, um, very powerful and, and actually hypervisor agnostic tool. So you can run it with vSphere. You can run it with, with any hypervisor as well. Um, 
So this is a good one. I think, I think the VMware security team may, may kill me for this. But, um, so I don't know, how many of you have heard about Venom? All right, if, if, you, if you're running a, a KVM or a Zen Cloud, I really hope you heard about Venom. Um, it actually doesn't apply to VMware, but I'm going to use it generically here anyway. It's a super scary security bug um, that, that was discovered very recently. Basically, it means that someone who's inside a VM, right, and should be isolated from everyone else, can actually break out and into that hypervisor and potentially break into any of the other VMs on that hypervisor. And depending on the security at your hypervisor layer, could break into other hypervisors as well. So very scary bug, kind of the you can't patch this one soon enough kind of bug. Right? But you know, if you think about it, if you're, in a, if you're a standard cloud, right, what are you going to do? Are you just going to immediately take down all your tenant VMs? Probably not. Right? You know, people talk, talk a pretty big game about, you know, oh, all my VMs, are, all my apps are cloud native. Well, I'll tell you, even GCE, for example, doesn't just take down everyone's VM, right? Even Amazon sends you an email and kind of tells, gives you some time to manage it. GCE actually has its own live migration capability now built in to help avoid these reboots, right? So even these more modern applications, right, care about this type of stuff. And so this is actually something that's, that's borderline trivial in a VMware environment, right? We have the combination of maintenance mode, which evacuates servers, right? combined with something called uh, the VMware Update Manager, which can automate the rolling patching of those servers. So this is just another example, probably not the first thing you thought of when you were thinking about what platform do I choose for OpenStack, but a very important one that affects very fundamental security properties of that system. And again, I'm just going to state for the record, this was not a vulnerability in ESX. Just kidding. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, for my own legal protection, I'm saying that. <laughs> um, Another cool thing, you know, storage is another thing, you know, in OpenStack. It's easy to just think, well, okay, well, any storage works for a demo, right? But then you have to think about, well, how am I going to tier my storage? What different offerings am I going to have? Uh, so so with, with OpenStack and VMware, you have something called storage policies. It makes it very easy to create different tiers of your storage. And maybe my databases need, um, need, you know, lots of IOPS. Maybe this other thing is just for logs, so who cares? I just want cheap storage, et cetera. And so, you know, as I mentioned, any storage that works with vSphere automatically works with OpenStack and vSphere. This slide in particular is diving into um, VMware Virtual SAN, which is, you know, kind of on this trend toward commodity storage where you can actually take disks and flash that exist in the hypervisor. And you don't have to manage a separate storage subsystem. It will actually aggregate them and let you give basically different levels of performance guarantees on a per workload or per disk basis. So you can, um, for example, like I said, you can have different tiers of storage. They're be some are backed with more flash, some are backed with less flash. Um, some pretty cool numbers that have, that have come out of here. I and mean, we're talking, you know, with a 64-node cluster uh, that's now supported in, in vSphere 6, you can get millions of IOPS, even in, you know, OLTP mixes, right? We're not talking about, you know, the top number is just kind of random read, right? The bottom is a mix of, I think, it's about 70-30 read-write. But, I mean, you can get some really serious performance out of this system. And the latest... Um, vSAN uh, that was just released earlier this year actually supports all flash configurations as well. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, so you can choose a hybrid mix of spinning and flash, or you can choose all flash. And, you know, as I mentioned, this is all managed from vSphere in a way that's integrated with all those ops tools that I showed you before. It makes it a very simple, cohesive system to, to manage and leverage. So, you know, just to go back, you know, I wanted to circle back and talk a bit about VMware integrated OpenStack. So everything I've said today, right, like I said, you could DIY OpenStack, you could get third-party OpenStack, um, or you can use VMware integrated OpenStack. You have to figure out what the right trade-off is for you. This is specifically talking about the VMware product, VMware integrated OpenStack. So what we do there is we basically take, um, you know, you take your existing vSphere environment, VMware integrated OpenStack is a combination of the upstream OpenStack code, right, with the VMware drivers enabled, and us having figured out a reference implementation of deploying the control plane, again, this is all based on our own internal deployment, so we've got a lot of, got a lot of experience from, uh, from a very practical experience with this stuff, um, with integrated tools for managing, installing, upgrading, how do you apply patches, how do you do rolling upgrades, um, how do you add a cluster after the fact, how do you add more compute capacity, day two things, all that integrated into a nice package that's very familiar to, to someone who runs a, a vSphere environment all day. And then, as I mentioned, integration, in an op, you know, it's optional integration um, into these additional cloud management solutions. And then we wrap that all up in this validated architecture, and we provide a single contact for support. 
And that single contact for support is actually probably more, more important than you might think. I mean, if you think about it, you boot a VM, it fails to come up. It's in an error state. It's not at all immediately obvious, not immediately obvious, and maybe after hours of looking at logs, right? Was that problem actually in vCenter? Or maybe with your storage that's backing vCenter? Or maybe it was a problem in the Nova driver or in the Nova scheduler, right? So having a single support contact there actually makes it much more fluid in terms of, of going from issue to resolution um, in terms of OpenStack. So I'm gonna, let me see how I'm doing on time. I'm going to, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's see. So I'm going to click out of here quickly, and I'm going to pop over and just, so there will be a full demo um, of this. I think tomorrow I'll show you, show you that. I just want to give you a little taste of, um, of, of deploying VMware integrated OpenStack. So basically, again, the idea here is that any VMware admin, this should be very, very familiar to. And so you can see basically what happens is you download a virtual appliance, a single virtual appliance to start. Um, you deploy it. And you see this little icon showing up, this VMware integrated OpenStack icon over here. And so you can click on that. I click Deploy OpenStack. It basically takes you through a wizard. Now, you, since I don't actually, you don't want to sit here watching me fumbling and type the whole time, I'm just going to import um, a template here, which is one of the ways to deploy it. But I'll take you through each of the screens um, that, that you'd use to deploy. And again, we'll go through this in more detail um, tomorrow. So this is really more just an example. So first off, I have to point to my vCenter, right? What vCenter am I going to use to back this deployment? Then I'm going to first pick a cluster where I want my VMs for my OpenStack control plane to be deployed to. These are my Nova servers and my Neutron servers, et cetera. So I just pick a cluster, use that. Right? I'm going to select the networking that I want to use for that cluster. Right, so there's two network ranges. Configure where my load balancer is, right? because this is a production grade OpenStack cloud. You're going to want to load balance for high availability and scale out. It's an inbuilt load balancer, so it's really, it's, it's very simple to deploy. We just deploy it with everything else. Then I can pick, you know, one or more clusters that I want to add as my compute capacity, right? Where are the tenant VMs actually going to land, right? And then when they land, well, what data stores do I want them to consume their storage from? And we've made it very simple for Glance. Glance can actually just use a vSphere uh, data store as a back end as well. So you just pick what storage you want to use for that. Now, for networking, we've got two different modes. You can use a basic VMware VDS that's built into vSphere, or you can use NSX for full-fledged um, neutron networking. In this example, you see I've populated a couple things um, describing how to connect to my NSX manager, um, what cluster of capacity I'm going to use for my, my gateways. So I think in the same room after this is a whole deep dive on NSX. You'll understand what, what the gateway is by the, um, by the end of that. All right, um, you know, for Keystone, right, where am I going to get my users from? either local database, or I can point to, to use the LDAP to point to an AD server, right? Optional, can configure syslog, like vRealize log inside or any third-party syslog server. And that's it. So here's all my config, and I can just press finish, and this is sped up depending on how fast your vSphere storage is that we're cloning all these VMs onto. I've seen it as fast as about 15 minutes and as slow as about you know, 45 minutes. Well, maybe in a nested environment, or even a little slower than that. But basically, it all depends. On, we're just creating VMs and cloning them. It's really simple. Um, so you can see here, and then you know, if you refresh, right? Nope. Now I've got a running VIO instance. And if we click into that, uh, you can see what we've done is we've automated the deployment of a fully, um, fully integrated, full scale out, highly available OpenStack control plane as VMs. And so at this point, right, you, or more likely all of your cloud tenants, right, can then just use Horizon or use whatever other tools they want in order to consume OpenStack capacity. Over time, you can add more vSphere clusters or more hosts to those clusters if you need more capacity. So again, very simple, very straightforward uh, for a vSphere admin uh, to deliver OpenStack services to their development teams. And that's really our goal. So just a couple more slides. You know, again, going back to that original core value prop that, that, that we talked about, right? It's about these open APIs that developers like on top of this really powerful, reliable OpenStack, uh, sorry, VMware infrastructure that your um, IT operations team already knows how to run at production grade. And one of the cool things, I don't know, hopefully most of you are at the keynote and you heard about the interop stuff, but there's been a lot of fantastic, fantastic work by the community to define these rules for OpenStack interoperability. What does it mean to, to implement the OpenStack APIs properly? 
So it's very fundamental to the, to the core OpenStack vision. And so there's this thing called DEF Core, and we've been very involved. We've got a guy named Mark Volker from our team who's one of, you know, contributes a lot to that project. And so we're very proud to say, you know, on day one of, of this announcement, VMware integrated OpenStack is, is fully compliant in terms of the OpenStack interoperability requirements. And so this is a screenshot. If you go up to the, you know, the, the OpenStack marketplace, you will see that little tested icon. And what that means is we've proven we've gone through the battery of tests to show that we are fully interoperable, interoperable from an OpenStack API perspective. That's very fundamental to the, to the commitment VMware is making to our customers, that we are implementing standard OpenStack APIs on top of our infrastructure, not some VMware variant of OpenStack or anything like that. They're fully compliant with the OpenStack uh, standard interoperability definition. So I'm very proud of our team and all of the, all of the work they put into not just building the product, but actually getting that validation as well. So as I promised, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, but these are a couple, I'm going to give you a couple slides of places where you can go to learn more. These are all the sessions um, at, at the OpenStack Summit that are still to come that, um, that, are, that are related to VMware. How many of you were at the Adobe session just before? That was a great one. You, you just missed it. So Adobe is one of the, the early customers using VMware integrated OpenStack. Um, I'd encourage you to go watch the video because that one already happened, so I can't tell you to go there. But we've got a, a set of sessions later today. We've got NSX in this room. I think it's the same room. Yeah. And then tomorrow, basically midday, we have a set of three sessions in a row um, that we'll talk about. First, it'll be a customer panel, um, which I think I have a dedicated slide there. So it'll be Franz from Adobe again. It'll be Prashant from Wells Fargo and Peter from Nike talking about their experiences with OpenStack uh, running on top of VMware. So I'd really encourage you to check that out. Um, a couple other sessions that will be one deep dive demo that takes you through that whole installer and the operations experience as well. So that's a very powerful thing to see. Um, and then, you know, for once you go home, this is where you go home to download it. So once you go home, you can download it. Like I said, any, any VMware customer can download and use this for free. Um, it's available via the VMware website. Um, if you want to come by, I encourage you to visit our booth, chat, ask questions. Uh, we can give you a de full demo there as well, one on one. A couple other areas. So VMware has these things called hands-on labs, which are just amazing. It's actually a full, you know, mini little cloud running OpenStack and VMware. And you click a button in your browser, we spin up in our internal cloud, and you can access and poke around, and you're driving a real VMware integrated OpenStack installation. So that's available at any point, um, any, any, any day you feel like going to that website, it's available. So it's very cool technology. Also, starting, um, I think, starting next week, there will be a three hour, I think it's three hour about, full OpenStack training targeted for VMware administrators who want to get up to speed on OpenStack, learn more about OpenStack. Um, and then there's a whole community uh, that you can actually ask questions, and it's a forum. And then uh, obviously you can follow us, you can follow our blog, you can follow us on, on Twitter as well. So um, with that, I'll wrap up. I just wanted to say we've got some snazzy, um, we got. OpenStack Summit Vancouver and VMware uh, hoodies up here if you want to come up. And with that, I'm happy to take some questions. Uh, please uh, use the microphone if you could. Thanks. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. And just uh, if we, our installation of this here in vCenter is all version 5, can we start using this or we have to? Version wait? 5? Yeah. 5.0 5 or 5? 5.5. Uh, five. Just 5? Five? 5.5. So, five. So it's 5.1, so yes, you can, or 5, oh, 5.5, 5, you're golden, man. Yeah, you're good, you're good. You're good. So, so basically, uh, the question was what vSphere versions. Um, general rules, if you're 6.0 or 5.5, 5, you're golden, don't worry about it. Um, if you're 5.1 um, or older, come talk to us. There are some ways that it can work, but there are also some caveats that I wouldn't want you to trip up on. Yep. Hi, I'm curious about where is vCloud? In all the stuff that you mentioned, should we consider it that from VMware? VCloud? Yeah. VCloud Director? Yep. So VCloud Director actually is already a product that is no longer being offered to enterprise customers. That actually happened well before we announced VMware integrated OpenStack. So what there is is there's something called uh, vRealize Automation, right, which is, a, which is another kind of, it's a, uh, I, would, I would say it's another kind of cloud-like solution more targeted at um, enterprise IT self-service, whereas OpenStack is more the kind of the AWS style, very developer, API-driven driven type of a cloud. 
Um, vCloud Director is still um, obviously used for our service provider partners, though. But in terms of orchestration or automation, what VMware will push from, uh, I mean, if, if I'm a customer and I approach VMware uh, saying, listen, I want to build a cloud, what do you guys will offer? You guys will offer OpenStack as the, the choice yeah. for, you know, uh, orchestration or automation? Yeah, later. certainly one of the choices. I mean, at the end of the day, right, cloud is a generic enough concept. That there's not going to be one, yeah. one offering that's right for everyone, right? The key thing to, to realize about VMware integrated OpenStack, right, as well, we have a set of customers who are interested in consuming their infrastructure via OpenStack APIs. We as VMware say, great. We want people to consume our infrastructure however they see fit. And so VMware integrated OpenStack is a way of enabling OpenStack consumption on top of our infrastructure. The same way we've you know, we created the Cloud Foundry product, and we created a product and then spun it out as Pivotal, right? Way to, to, to consume our infrastructure as Cloud Foundry. We have products to make it easy to consume our infrastructure as Hadoop, et cetera, right? And so, you know, particularly, I didn't mention this, but I don't know if any of you have seen the, the announcements around the container stuff, but um, VMware just announced uh, two open source projects, Photon and Lightwave. I encourage you to, to check them out. Uh, this is my team as well, so I had to try to get a plug in. Um, but, you know, again, right? Containers, great. Right. We're embracing different ways of running uh, containers, and we've got to, you know, love to have discussions about our customers about why we think containers run best on top of VMware infrastructure. All right. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Appreciate it. Take care. Come up and get a hoodie.